In the last decades of the 19th century, a bitter literary dispute in Germany flared up over the true authorship of Shakespeare's plays and poems. At that time, mainly the Bacon Shakespeare authorship thesis was popular. The Earl of Oxford Shakespeare authorship thesis through Thomas Looney's book, Shakespeare Identified, was not yet printed and known, and also the discovery by Leslie Hodson of the Latin coroner's report on Marlowe's death in a dispute in a house in Deptford, was not yet known. Edwin Borman, a bright and witty German writer, and self a publisher, in England and the USA attracted remarkable attention as a literary historian and vehement representative of the Shakespeare Bacon authorship theory. With this theory, However, he could not assert himself, not least because of the bitter resistance of the philologists, the so-called self-proclaimed Stratfordian experts of his time. In one of his books of the Bacon Shakespeare theory, entitled, 300 Flashes of Inspiration and Others, from, and about, Bacon, Shakespeare, Marlowe. He clearly felt the need, to discuss the existing, unsolved, Marlowe issue. He explicitly wrote that the Tamerlan poet and the producer of Marlowe's plays and poetry were one and the same person, there can be no doubt about. But who was it, who played hide and seek here? The first Tamerlan print appeared in 1590. If we look closely, the year 1591 already gives us the right clue about the poet. In 1591, an anonymous drama, entitled The Troublesome Reign of John King of England, appeared, the well-known juvenile form of Shakespeare's King John. In the Epistle to the Gentlemen Readers we read. You, that with friendly grace of smoothed brow have entertained the Scythian Tamburlne, and given applause unto an infidel, vouchsafe to welcome, with like courtesy, a warlike Christian and your countryman. For Christ's true faith endured he many a storm, and set himself against the man of Rome, until base treason, by a damned white, did all his former triumphs put to flight. Accept of it, sweet gentles, in good sort, and think, it was prepared for your disport. Which poet would have allowed himself, to advertise an older piece in this place, if this piece did not also come from his pen? Aren't these first lines a confession from the anonymous poet, that this drama was written by the same man as the Tamerlan? The poet of both dramas, the poet of Tamerlan and the poet of King Johann is therefore undoubtedly one and the same person. Those who really wanted to push the Tamerlan drama Marlowe thereupon, said that the older King Johann also came from Marlowe. But since the older drama King Johann comes from the same pen that wrote the later completed King Johann, Tamerlan cannot come from any other head than that of the great Shakespeare poet. Just listen to the English translation of section C. Borman's final reflections on Bacon, Shakespeare, and Marlowe. But for the fact that the Marlowe poet and the Shakespeare poet are one and the same person, there are a number of other supporting documents. The verses of Shakespearean youth poetry and the Marlowe verses are like one egg to another. For example the bloody drama Titus Andronicus repeatedly has been pushed to Marlowe. The historical treatment in Edward II is exactly the same as in Shakespeare's histories. The Jew from Malta is nothing but the first youthful draft of a merchant of Venice. And, what tops everything off, a whole series of individual verses completely coincide with Marlowe and Shakespeare, they are the same here, as there. There are many individual phrases in the Marlowe dramas again literally in Henry VI and in The Taming of the Shrew. Yes, 
The resemblance between Henry VI and the Marlowe dramas is so strong, that there are researchers who, like Titus Andronicus, also attribute the second and the third part of Henry VI to Marlowe. The real thing is, that Marlowe and Shakespeare melt into one person, and for the one who recognizes in the Shakespeare poet, Francis Bacon, also Bacon must become the Marlowe poet. The name William Shakespeare is one of Bacon's poet masks, the name Christopher Marlowe another.